Okay, it's recording. Getting the birds chirping in the background. There we go. That way I can get the whole... Got to come back a little bit so I can get you in the whole thing. There we go. My longtime great-grandmother, Nancy Ward. She was known as, known as the um, Tennessee Pocahontas. And she's also Pocahontas' great niece. Um, did you get her picture on there? I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to get closer to it. Okay. It's been a very long night. We slept in the car. And I'm going to get some some more of the information, too. And I'm going to get that map. I've been determined to get all this stuff. Oh, there's a leaf there in the way. There we go. There's a leaf. So I can get a better view there. And I want to make sure we're getting... All of the writing, okay. I want to make sure you and your grandmother are together in the picture. <laughs> so I'm just showing everybody um, my Cherokee heritage, but also a lot of people have been wanting to come here. Um, to see the Tennessee Overhill experience. I might do a, a scan here. Oh. So, real quick. You can keep talking, hon. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm just going to read this plaque. The Tennessee Overhill experience. experience. Um, first, the factory. According to legend, Nancy Ward, or Nanhe, or Nani, was born in 1730s in Chota, and the Overhill Towns at a time when the Cherokee society was largely traditional, despite the extensive fur trade. As a child of a Cherokee woman, Nancy was by birth a member of her mother's maternal clan. She lived among her mother's kin and worked beside them in the garden plot and court fields plotted by their clan. Some accounts say that her father was Cherokee, and others say a British trader or a Delaware Indian. And um, my take on it is that she was actually like, okay, because she's in my family, I have a deep understanding of this. There was always like a Cherokee or like some kind of mixed Indian, and, but mostly Cherokee. It was always like Cherokee. And then there was like, you know, like maybe a half European or something like that that was also half Cherokee. So. It's entirely possible that um, some settlers, you know, mingled with, well, they did this anyway, but it's always Cherokee white man, Cherokee white man. So I'm roughly around 40%, and she's almost full-blooded, um, but we just did that in order to keep us and keep the, um, how do I... Cherokee people producing after generation, generation after generation. Well, sort of. I mean, but really it's about, like, keeping the Cherokee spirit with alive within the generation because not only are our ancestors important, but also our descendants are equally as important. And vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Atakulakula, Peace Chief of Choda, is said to have been her mother's brother. Nancy became prominent war woman and beloved woman, Gigayu. She helped respected male elders, beloved men, carry out ceremonies and assisted war leaders with negotiations. Among the British and Americans, Nancy gained a myth-like reputation as a emissary orator and protector of white settlers and captives. She was known by the surname of the British trader, Bryant Ward, whom she married. Um, but they say that he was also Cherokee as well. I have to go back in my genealogy and, and look. After repeat, repeated destruction of Choda in the 1770s and 1780s, Nancy Ward, her children, and other kin moved south of the Huasi River 
finally settling in Amelia near present day Benton, which is where we're at now. During t Nancy's last decade, she operated an inn and stock pen at Women Killer Ford, not far from this grave site. According to a great grandson who attended her funeral, Nancy Ward died in 1822 and was buried by a Cherokee cousin. So she was roughly like mm, 90 something years old, maybe 100, and that was pretty legendary for that time. Okay, and then it has a picture of her. Let's go ahead and get that. Some people, a lot of people say that she looks a lot like me, especially when I have my natural hair color because it is streaky like this. But I'm going to read on the bottom. It says, on May 2nd, 1817, before she passed away, a woman's council led by the elderly Nancy Ward or her representative presented and signed an address to a Cherokee National Council meeting at nearby Amoya. They demanded an end to the seeding of the Cherokee lands, which by tradition belonged to the Cherokee women and their children. This sketch of a Cherokee woman drawn circa 1832 to 1839 was by George Catlin from Catlin, North American Indians, 1913. So that's supposedly what she looked like. <laughs> and I know when I was younger, I definitely looked a lot more like her, but... Anyway, if you can tell, you might want to zoom in on her eyes. She does have blue eyes. So for people who think that Native Americans or Cherokee people only have um, brown or green eyes, that is simply not true. <laughs> my, my father, for example, he was a blonde. But he also has some European, and part European. I mean, um, but all about me. It's just been something that I've been searching for on my quest for a long time. And I've had a lot of people that are um of Native descent. Um Dakota and um a Pasi and Blackfoot and all kinds of different people. This is Beauty Berry right here. Beautiful. And um, anyway, everyone's been requesting me to do this video when I come through, so I am, I am, um, heeding to my promise, um, doing just that. I don't feel like reading all this. I'll zoom in on it when you... All right. I just don't feel like reading all this. It looks like a book. But I love that little clearing in there. Because the birds were chirping at me yesterday. It was so cute. And this bunny rabbit. Um, I went, I had to pee. And there's no bathroom here. So I went and did my mother nature thing. Like through that clearing. And the bunny rabbit that was staring at me on this side. Went through the trees. And was within five feet of me. It was pretty neat. I'm doing this section by section of this map that's on here. And yesterday when I came here, I know this is really hard to believe, but I had like actual thunderbolts like come straight down. It wasn't like crooked or anything. And they were like on all sides of me um, as I was up here. And um, I heard a little voice up here that said, don't worry, nothing will happen to you up here. And it proved it because I had like bump, 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 bump. It wasn't that close. It was probably like between here and probably that tree over there if you want to but anyway it should have struck me anyway <laughs> I should have been dead but anyway this is I don't even want to put in those beautiful places I've been in a long time um we just came back from Missouri If y'all come down here, please do 
not litter. There's no trash can here. That's why I say that. Yeah, I'm gonna get that too. I love these pretty purple flowers. And then there's the mountains right over that ridge. <laughs> Here's some baby's breath. They're pretty. More flowers there. Look at that willow tree. My incense burned up here. The incense burned out and it was raining like mad crazy. Here, take that so you can zoom in and on the writing and stuff. Everybody leaves offerings up here that comes here. Well, I shouldn't say everybody, but lots of people. See a pumpkin and a flower pot with flowers in it. Ribbons, feather. And here's her gravesite. Here's where she was buried. Isn't it awesome? I am. It says, In memory of Nancy Ward, princess and prophetess of the Cherokee Nation, the Pocahontas of the Cherokee, or sorry, the Pocahontas of Tennessee, and constant friend of American pioneer born 1738, died in 1822 and um, I don't know if you can see this oh I think you can all right well there's um, the Cherokee symbol in the middle which is also on the Cherokee flag it's a wagon wheel representing the trail of tears and stars all around it kind of like the first American flag um, and then there's on each side so on either side there's um sorry I'm at a loss for words I'm so happy um there are uh, arrowheads on either side and it says erected by the Nancy Ward chapter daughters of the American Revolution which she was back in 1928 I told you, last night was awesome because we heard welcoming drums, but I seem to have a problem with my um, equipment. <laughs> I had a problem with my equipment. It wasn't capturing things correctly, so maybe I can alter it in the um, next video if I can, if I'm going to, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to do that or not. Anyway, here's my offering. I brought something back from uh, um, Missouri. I don't remember which state I came from. <laughs> I know, I'm so tired. We slept in a Hardy's parking lot. Okay, and then there's um, something that was on my medicine bag that was actually a um, dream catcher. And um, I found a tiger's eye which is right there. I found a tiger's eye when I was in Missouri and decided to put it here. And I have a matching tiger's eye in my medicine bag, which is right here. And here's some feathers. And I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> but if you can see it, it's there's quartz attached with feathers. It's really beautiful quartz. And amethyst. Oh, okay. I don't remember seeing this yesterday. Yeah, it was there. I noticed it. 
Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there. here's my incense burner, and I burned some candles around here last night, too, and they pretty much all burned out, except for one that I guess was just done, and then there was um, this incense burner. I'm just going to leave that here for other people that want to come and burn the incense. Do not take or touch any of these things. Unless you put place the offerings yourself, I wouldn't recommend it at all. Um, a lot of people, if they can't, um, well, scratch that part. But some people, they leave money. And um, people, they uh, actually come here. And it's okay to cross this gate. I... Um, or at least for me, because I'm, I'm kin, but um, there's a guy named Longfellow. I'm not sure what his native name is, also buried in the same site. And then there's um, Five Killer. And I guess I'm going to have to climb this in order to read it. But um, if you come here, just make sure that you don't walk on these rocks behind it, because that's where the bodies are buried, all through here in the back okay but five killer was also known as Atakula Kula and he has a um cross up there so I guess he died a Christian but um I'm pretty sure that Nancy Ward was like pagan but anyway um the religion was either um Christian introduced by the English or they were pagan which was what they nat naturally were um, it says I can't read that hey Janelle can you take this for a sec yeah last night we heard welcoming drums and I want to see if I could put that part maybe like Oh, I also put this down here as an offering for Longfellow and Five Killer. Um, it says that my phone is about to die, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut this short because um, I had full battery and now my phone's about to die. Um... Probably because of all the spirits that are around here. And they just kind of suck up the battery. But I'm going to put this on Facebook. Um, peace, be lucky, and be well. Love to all, and hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.